Biomechanics and Orthodontics The Basic Principles The physical concepts that form the foundation of orthodontic mechanics are the key to understanding how orthodontic appliances work and are critical in designing treatment methodologies and appliances. Let's first start with basics and look at certain biomechanical terminologies. Mechanics, as it is well known, is a branch of physics that deals with mechanical properties and when this knowledge and methods of mechanics are applied to the structure and function of living systems that is biology, for example a tooth and its surrounding oral architecture, then it is termed as biomechanics. Orthodontic appliances are used to produce four systems that will displace teeth and initiate a biologic cascade allowing teeth to move. This tooth movement is brought about by not only force but also movement which causes the teeth to also rotate, tip and torque. So force is basically a vector as it has magnitude and direction. Let's say this tooth is acted over by a distal force of 100 grams. So 100 grams is the magnitude and distal is the direction. Once a force is applied to the tooth, its nature of motion is regulated to a large extent by its center of mass which is the point at which all of the tooth's mass seems to be concentrated such that if a force is applied through this point, the tooth will move in a straight line. Now this happens in a gravity free environment. What will happen in an environment where gravity is present like ours? So here the center of mass changes to center of gravity as now the tooth is restrained by the force of gravity. The center of gravity is located more towards the crown as the mass of the tooth is concentrated more coronally. Besides gravity, the tooth is more dominantly restrained by periodontal structures that are not uniform as they involve only the root and not the crown. This moves the center of gravity more apically and now it is termed as the center of resistance, abbreviated as CRES. Now in case of force, the point of application of force is also important. There is only one point on a tooth through which a force can be applied that will move the tooth in the direction of the force without tipping or rotating it. This point is the center of resistance and a force acting through it will cause pure translation of the tooth with center of rotation at infinity. The location of center of resistance depends on the size and shape of the tooth as well as the quantity and level of the supporting structures. In a healthy single rooted tooth with an intact periodontal ligament, the center of resistance is presumed to be somewhere between one third and half the distance from the alveolar crest to the root apex. While for a multi rooted tooth, the center of resistance is located between the roots about one to two millimeters apical to the furcation. The center of resistance shifts apically with alveolar bone loss and loss of periodontal support. Let's take a clinical situation here. For a maxillary central incisor, the center of resistance is approximately 10 millimeters apical to the level of placement of an orthodontic bracket. The center of resistance is located more apically for a periodontally compromised tooth with loss of attachment because of the difference in the bone height, as you can see in the clinical image. Now let's go back. We talked about tooth movement, which is brought about by not only force, but also movement. So what is movement? We saw that when an external force acts on a tooth at its center of gravity, it causes that tooth to move in a linear path. This force is termed as centric force. What about the forces that act at places other than the center of resistance? Besides causing the tooth to move in a linear path, these eccentric forces have a turning effect on the tooth called torque. In other words, the force will also impart a moment on the tooth. Here we can see that the center of resistance is on the embedded part of the root. One can apply force on the exposed part of the tooth, which is at a distance from the center of resistance. Thus, with a single force, invariably a moment is created. Moment is the product of force times the perpendicular distance from the point of force application to the center of resistance. Here, the distal force produces a clockwise moment. For single rooted teeth, the center of rotation is most frequently located in the middle third of the root. Now let's talk about center of rotation. The center of rotation is the key to defining the nature of tooth movement. When a single force is applied on a tooth, the tooth will move in the direction of the force applied. 
This type of tooth movement is called simple tipping or uncontrolled tipping. It is easy to visualize here that the crown and the root will move in opposite directions. In controlled tipping, the center of rotation is located at the root apex. The tooth moves similar to the pendulum on a clock with its apex fixed at a particular point and the crown moving from one side to the other. There is one tooth movement that is extremely rare and very difficult to achieve in its strictest sense and that is translation, which is sometimes known as bodily movement. Here, both the crown and the root move in equal amounts and in the same direction with no rotation. In this case, the center of rotation is non-existent or in mathematical terms approaches infinity. In root movement, the center of rotation is located at the crown tip while the root is free to move in the direction of the force. Uncontrolled tipping is the most common tooth movement in everyday orthodontics, but it is not always the preferred one. To modify this pattern of tooth movement, a new force is applied closer to the center of resistance of the tooth. A rigid attachment, often called a power arm, can be attached to the bracket on the crown of the tooth. Then the force can be applied to this power arm. In this way, the line of force can be moved to a different location, thereby altering its distance from the center of resistance. This also causes a change in the moment of the force. Note here that the force has been kept constant. So the black dotted line represents the power arm. So in uncontrolled tipping, there is no power arm. The red dots are center of resistance and the orange dots are the center of resistance of the orthodontically moved tooth. To alter the force system in controlled tipping, I have added a power arm below the center of resistance of the tooth. In translation, the force is now being applied through the center of resistance by increasing the length of the power arm. In root movement, there is minimal crown movement, so here the power arm extends beyond the center of resistance. The black curved arrows represent the moment of force, so you can see that the moment of force increases or decreases with an increase or decrease in the distance of force application from the center of resistance. An alternative method to alter the tooth movement is to alter the moment to force ratio. Moment to force ratio is the ratio of the counterbalancing moment produced to the net force that is applied to a tooth and this counterbalancing moment is created in the direction opposite to the moment of force. The location of the center of rotation depends on the ratio between the moment and the force applied to the tooth so this MF ratio and not on the absolute value of either of it. As the counterbalancing moment increases, the center of rotation moves apically. So let's take an example of translation. When a force to move a tooth is applied at the bracket that is about 10 millimeters from the center of resistance, a tendency for the tooth to tip is created that is 10 times the magnitude of the force. To counteract the tendency for tipping, a couple can be applied intentionally to produce a counterbalancing moment of equal magnitude in the opposite direction. The force alone would cause the tooth to move in the direction of the force and the crown to tip in the same direction. The couple completely negates this tendency to tip but the tooth still moves in the direction of the force. When the applied moment is greater than the tipping forces, the tooth will translate in the direction of the force without tipping. In pure translation, the center of rotation is considered to be at infinity because no rotation occurs. It should be noted that the differences in the MF ratios between these tooth movements are very small and even minor alterations in the magnitude of the applied forces or the counterbalancing moment will alter the type of tooth movement. So depending on the type of tooth movement, the MF ratios are for bodily movement, it is 10 is to 1. There is equal movement of the crown and root. In controlled tipping, the ratio varies between 5 is to 1 to 8 is to 1. The center of rotation is displaced away from the center of resistance. The crown and root move in the same direction. In uncontrolled tipping, the MF ratio is 5 is to 1. And the center of rotation and center of resistance are almost the same. Thus, the tooth rotates around the center of resistance. And in root movement or torque, the MF ratio is 12 is to 1, wherein the root apex moves further than the crown. So this was about basic principles in biomechanics. We shall gradually cover other topics related to this. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.